Welcome to your first day of class, everyone. I'm Marketing Communications Manager Daniel Sloan, and on behalf of Trident, I want to say thank you for taking the next step in your educational journey with us. New students often have a lot of questions, and we're here to help. As a way to ease you into our unique student-centered model, we designed this webinar that will cover all the areas vital to success in your chosen program. Let's introduce today's presenters. First, we have Dr. George Del Hierro. He joined Trident in 2010 and currently serves as the department chair in University College. During his time at Trident, he has worked closely with students in a variety of roles, including academic advising, financial aid, and academic probation support services. Dr. Del Hierro earned a PhD in educational leadership from Trident and has received numerous awards during his time at the university, including honors for communication and collaboration and for student motivation. Next, we have Tasha Kiriton. She currently serves as a student success advisor three and part-time faculty member. For the past 10 years, she has helped facilitate in initiatives to improve student success, namely a senior manager in the Center for Student Success. From assisting with orientation to being a member of the Committee of Academic Standards, her passion is to help students reach their academic dreams. She's a Trident alum graduating from the Master of Arts in Education program and is currently a Doctor of Education student. Just a few notes before we begin today's session. Although a portion of the webinar has been pre-recorded, you have the option to ask questions at any time. Look for the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen, find the questions box, type in your question, hit submit. The FDOC team is behind the scenes right now. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll answer them during the live Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Now I'm gonna hand things off to Tasha to talk about student success tips. The floor is yours. Thanks, Daniel, and welcome everybody. We're so excited to have you here. I love Trident University. I've been a student, I teach, and I, I wear many different hats, and I work with students very closely. So. This is an exciting time for you to start on your educational path. Here's some things that we're gonna go over today. We're gonna to talk about tips for success. I'm gonna spend some time really digging in there. Uh, it can be a little nerve wracking when you, you haven't done school for a while or it's just a totally new environment. And so we wanna make that transition as smooth and comfortable as possible for you. Dr. Del Hierro is gonna talk about academic writing. That tends to be one of the main concerns with students when they're coming back to school is, how do I write? Uh, how do I get back in the mode of uh, formatting my paper? And then we're going to talk about career and networking support. But I would ask everyone to stick around for what I think is one of my favorite parts of the webinar, which is the questions section. We always have great questions, and there's a great student success story at the end. So stay tuned. Now we're going to talk a little bit about just tips for success and moving moving into your classes for the first time. So whether you've been away for years, maybe this is your first class in college, or maybe you're just transitioning right into a different school, we want you to be confident. Everyone here has a different walk of life and you all bring different perspectives. Whether you're a stay-at-home parent, maybe you're a veteran or advanced in your career, or maybe like one of my 89 year old students who's coming back, who came back and got a master's degree, you're in another season of life and you're ready to move forward. So what I mean by that is know that your perspective will enhance the conversation and your discussions in your class and you are worthy to be here. So feel free to ask questions, know that you're supported. We're gonna talk about your support team, get to know your professors and peers as faculty members on here, we often see students a little nervous to reach out to us and there's no, no need for that. We want you to feel connected as a university and, and between you and the student. You as the student, my apologies. We're gonna talk a lot about time management and uh, long-term academic planning, but most importantly, have fun. And this will help with your motivation. This is something, you know, if you ever get stuck or just feel like, things are difficult, that's when it's time and a trigger should go off that you need to reach out and connect with us. And we are here and we genuinely want to help. So let's start by talking about time management. 
And this is something very near and dear to my heart. As Danny Sloan said, I got my master's degree at Trinet University. At the time I was a manager, I had a very extremely premature baby. I was in the office a lot and managing life and work and I wanted to get my master's degree. So I can relate to trying to balance it all. One of my rules was when I got home from work, I wasn't allowed to sit on the couch. And the reason I say that is because it is so easy, especially these days, to just sit down, watch some TV, or get on your phone and just kind of veg out. By staying off the couch, my rule was then I wasn't allowed to sit on the couch until I went and did my homework. So that kind of comes up to our first point, which is create a time management plan. This might be new for some of you, or some of you might live and die by your planner. And so if this is new for you, think about it this way. You're creating a plan to succeed. When I see students not creating a plan, sometimes I, I, I challenge them to do so, and usually they come back and are able to submit more on time. They're able to figure out when they want to go to school for themselves. No one here is telling you to go to school at what time, right? Usually you have a certain amount, whether if it's your CERT program, you have a week, or if it's your master's associates or bachelor's, you have two weeks to do your module. And so anytime within there, you need to set aside a few nights or, or maybe mornings, whatever you, whenever you think best and you have time dedicated, to make that your school time. So when your friends call and they miss you because they haven't seen you in a while, you've got schoolwork to do and you wanna plan your life around that. Now Trident is all about flexibility too. And so consider weekends, holidays, birthdays, vacations. We want you to have a life, but you're now fitting this new component into your schedule. And if you don't make time for it, there just won't be time for it. And so I love to see a student with a plan. If that's something you can do today, get out your planner. I use my planner here. I have a wall calendar that you can see here in the back and I have a digital calendar. So I am all about scheduling your schoolwork. And in the beginning, you may wanna go in every day for even 15 minutes just to get a sense of what do you need to accomplish the things and to kind of feel like you're in the rhythm of school. Cause you're, I always tell students, you know, in your first few sessions, always take classes back to back so that you can get into a good rhythm. Cause once you get out of that rhythm, sometimes it's hard to jump back in. So write down your due dates. Uh, the, the bachelor's and master's and associate's classes are usually due on Sunday nights. So I would always say, try and do your first discussion the first week of the module and your peer responses the following week. If you have questions about this, we can talk more in the Q&A section as well um, and make adjustments to your schedule. But I think the key is to just have a plan, right? Don't get discouraged when you fall behind. Again, as I mentioned before, that's kind of that trigger. If you're falling behind, you may think, oh, well, I don't want to give excuses or it, it, this is just on me. Trust me. We understand what it's like to be adults and to have things come up. And so we can't help you if we don't know what's going on. And it's not to judge you, it's not to be upset with you, it's to say, hey, that's okay. Look, you, can, you still have time to do this or maybe we can help you with this option. Again, there are options and exceptions if needed. And that's something that you, there are eligibility requirements that we wanna help you with. So let's talk a little bit about who you're gonna be reaching out to in that support group. When you log into your student portal today on the homepage of mytlc.trident.edu, you will see two photos and those are going, that's consider that kind of like your, your support team, right? There's gonna be your student finance advisor and there's going to be your student success advisor. Hey, maybe some of you guys have my face on there. You never know. Uh, I do support a lot of students and I love it. And so in addition to that, right now, if you've just started your program, 
you are working with your admissions advisor. You've probably built, hopefully you've built a good rapport with them. And once they get you all set up in class and started in class within the first two weeks, they're gonna transition you over to someone like myself, a student success advisor, who is then gonna become your point of contact. I'd always encourage you to save their phone number, note when they email you, I always try to only email my students when it's something important that I want them to know. And so just kind of start to get in the groove of checking your emails every day, or we text and we call. So, uh, and then finally, the other piece to that puzzle is your instructor. Now that will change from session to session, but they don't know what they, what they don't know, right? And so if you're not submitting work and they don't know what's going on with you. They're just assuming maybe they're not interested in class or, you know, you just don't want to leave any room for assumptions. So I would always say even just email your teacher and, and give them an update about what's going on or if you have any questions or maybe there's something that you like about the class. So just know that although you're alone in your room or at your desk doing your work, you're not alone. You are part of this bigger Trident family. And so I really hope that when you make it to our commencement and you watch the video or you attend in person, that you can see that you are a part of a much bigger, huge Trident family. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some of our resources. You may be wondering, okay, what is there available for me that's gonna help me transition and getting started in school? So in your mytlc.trident.edu portal, there is across the top uh, several options and one of them on the far right says my resources. Here you'll see a list of resources available to you. Math and writing tend to be a big thing that students are concerned about, rightfully so. Usually students will be, be nervous about managing their time and writing and doing the academic piece. If you can manage your time, you've got half of the battle won. Now here's the resources that could help. Uh, we do use APA formatting as our general formatting style for the school for papers. Now, it is important to note that that's what we stick with, but it's depending on your assignments, it might not be required. Like in a math class, they might not ask that you do APA. We are in the transition right now. Some classes are using edition six and some seven. Uh, that is something that is transition um, in the process of transitioning. So I'd always ask your teacher, but the key is I would encourage you to start to get to know that a quick Google search and you will find so much information on that. But don't be worried, don't, don't be overwhelmed by it. Learning is a gradual process, right? And then the Turnitin guide which is something to kind of help you ensure that your work shows as your original work. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is tutoring services. So if you see on this next slide that you are in one of these classes, English 101, Math 101, Statistics and Math 201, Health Statistics, uh, Operations Management, Finance, or any of the Tux courses, there is something, and you'll see on here on the screen, that's called free tutoring. What this is, is we've partnered with tutor.com. And so if you're like me, you stay up late and you do your homework after the kids are in bed and everything's done. Um, and so you can access a tutor anytime, 24 seven. And it usually takes about one to two minutes connect, but it's a great option if you're just feeling like, ah, I just need to ask a few questions or am I doing this right? So I'd encourage you to use that. The next is one of my favorite options because, or resources, because it's something that I help facilitate. Every day I'm in this orientation, helping new students answer questions, have discussions. So if you have not done that as of today, please go in and before you go into your class, complete the online orientation. You'll have access to it for up to six months after you start your program, but it's by far the best way to go in and learn the portal, learn the classroom, and how you can navigate, how you can 
find your teachers, how you can participate in discussion. You can practice submitting work to make sure that you do it correctly. And, and I'm in there every day answering questions and just making sure people feel comfortable. And usually the feedback is that, oh my gosh, this is what helped me kind of overcome that hump and feel comfortable. Next, we're gonna talk about just kind of first steps to do. We've, we've, I've kind of laid the groundwork now, but go in, log in to your class, do your orientation and take a tour of your class. There's not much that you can click on that's gonna break your class or there's really not anything that could break it. But sometimes people are a little nervous, just click around. There's different ways to access different information. And so the more time you spend in the class, the more you're gonna feel comfortable. Look over the syllabus, read the assignments and post your introduction. I always say the introduction's the easiest part. You literally just go in and say, hi, this is me, a little bit about me. And then you get to read about your peers and see that you might have a lot in common or, or something to learn from the peers in class. Ask questions and develop your time management plan. So that's kind of like the pre-gaming for the class, right? You wanna make sure you've read the syllabus, you've read everything, but don't feel overwhelmed. I always felt in college, like the first week of class, that it was a lot of information, but then over time you get reminders, you check your schedule and you're doing good. And so develop that plan and check in with your advisor. I always, whenever I see a student that I don't know, I call them, I'm like, I need to know you because we haven't spoken yet. And I, and I truly want to know them and what their goals are. So in summary today, you're gonna log in, you're gonna complete your orientation, you're gonna introduce yourself in your class, and then I would encourage you by midweek, usually by Wednesday, to submit at least your module one discussion post. That's different than your introduction. That's an actual assignment discussion post. Keep in mind, teachers are held bound to a rubric. What is a rubric? It is a list of criteria that the student needs to meet for each assignment. And so you can see even in your class, okay, if I submit it on time, I'm gonna get like full points or you know, they require this many words, so I get this many points. So always look at your rubrics for all of our assignments. Every module is three assignments. You're gonna have your case assignment, your SLP, and your discussion post. Most classes have four modules, I think pretty much all of them. <laughs> and sometimes your SLP might be a quiz or a paper. Your case assignment typically is a paper or an activity in that regard. Get to know your professors, set up your work area and just be ready to go. And I would say, as soon as you get your first discussion in, try to write a paper maybe by the weekend so that you don't have to your case assignment, your SLP the second week of class, or if you do both of them in the second week, it's no problem but just make sure that you kind of know each day what you're gonna be working on and submitting. And so it, my last advice is just really reach out and we don't want you to feel alone. I always tell my students, I am full of the most random information. And so you don't know unless you ask, maybe you can't find a resource in the library. Maybe you aren't sure how to set up text to get a grade notification. We can help you with that. So that being said, I'm excited for you. Hopefully that this information was helpful. I'm gonna turn the time over to Dr. Deliero and he's gonna discuss one of, one of the topics that I think is really crucial and get ready to take some good notes. We're gonna talk about academic writing. Dr. Deliero, I turn the time over to you. Uh, on behalf of the faculty, I just wanna extend my warmest welcomes to all of you. Uh, it's always the most exciting time of the month for us to welcome in a brand new crop of leaders into the Trident family. And so uh, we all look forward to interacting with you, getting to know you and, and seeing what great things you accomplish in and out of the classroom. Uh, so this section focuses on academic writing. Uh, it's, one of, uh, it's one of the points of concern for some students, especially who have been out for a while. Um, uh, it causes some anxiety. And so the goal of these next couple slides are just to 
relieve some of that anxiety and give you some direction to build momentum. So Michael mentioned it, um, but these first couple of days, it's going to be really imperative for you to get the wheels going. And so I hope to provide a broad overview of what your faculty uh, will expect of you with writing and to relieve some of that anxiety for you. Uh, this first slide is just to, it's meant to, to frame your mindset for what the expectations are within academic writing and what and why and how and how is it different from what you might be used to within your military experience or business experience. So the three key differences that I kind of want that I want you to think about um, between business and slash military and academic writing are the goals of writing, the process of writing, and voice. And so when you're in the military, so the first one is the goals of writing. Uh, if you're going to graduate from a call it from a, an accredited institution, you're expected to have a high degree of written and oral communication skills. And so that is kind of what we're, we're helping you, helping prepare you for upon graduation. So the first um, the first uh, point that I want you to think about is the goal of writing. So when you're in the when you're in a business environment and when you're in a military environment, your goal of writing, the only purpose you're writing is for mission accomplishment and to accomplish objectives. The difference within what you're gonna find in an academic environment is that, that goal, the goal of writing is to help you become a better communicator. And so there are some steps and some areas that we look for as your faculty to help you become a better thinker and to help you become a better writer, a more effective writer. Um, <clears throat> so for example, um within the military and and you know in business you're, you're writing to accomplish this objective um as quickly and efficiently as possible and when you're in your academic classes we're looking for your logic and rational thought development of your ideas so we're not so sometimes this comes out um when you're answering questions as maybe a two or you know a one to two sentence or a one to three sentence reply to answer a question because you're in that mindset of answering the question and giving the conclusion as quickly and efficiently as possible. But that's not the only thing. That's actually not the most important thing that your faculty is looking for. It's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for the reasons why and how you came to that, to those conclusions, your critical thinking skills and your logic and your, th and your rational thought development. And so that takes more time and it takes more, um, effort to lay out those arguments and to do the research uh, from different sources and uh, integrate the background readings into your experience to, to support your conclusion. So your faculty member is not just looking for the answer. We're not just looking for the conclusion. We're looking for your, your reasons why, your, 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 the thinking and the, and the evidence behind it and your logic and your rational thought development. The second, the second um, area of um, that, that, that's a challenge between, or the difference between military and business writing versus academic writing is the process of writing. So when you're in a business environment or you're in a military environment, your superior would give you a, a command or, a, or an objective to write up a memo or write, a, write this up or write that up, uh, do a report. You pass it off to your superior, your superior edits it, adds a couple things, passes it off to their superior. And before a decision is made, there's two or three hands that have touched this, you know, this document. That's different than what you're going to find here and what your experience will be in an academic environment because you are the single author of this document, of this assignment. So you have to go through the brainstorming. You have to go through the, um, you have to go through the outlining and the editing and the drafting and the formatting and all those things take time. And so you have to consider those elements when you uh, when you develop your time management um, your time management plan for for these classes. The third um, key difference is voice. So if you haven't noticed, especially in the military, you're big on uniforms. I mean, you're dressing the same, you're often talking the same, and sometimes that comes out in your writing. Often that that comes out in your writing, and so that causes some issues because it it raises some concerns for academic integrity issues. Some, so we want you to be aware of that. Your instructor will be looking for 
your independent, your independent understanding of these concepts. And so we're looking for you to paraphrase different ideas from a variety of different readings and background sources. We're looking for your for you to summarize uh, some of these um, these ideas in your own words. So quotations are great, but your instructor will care more about your understanding of these concepts. And that is different than stripping out a quotation and sticking it in your paper. It's fundamentally different and it takes a lot more critical thinking and a lot more time and effort to summarize these different ideas in your own words and put them in. But that is what your instructor is looking for. And if you if you consider these things, you're gonna, it's you you will reap the benefits of of this program at, upon graduation and i promise you you'll become a more effective uh, communicator and contributor to your organizations the next slide uh, is just meant to give you a general overview of academic writing structure and so uh this this is not an all-inclusive slide uh, these are just some tips that i as an instructor i see uh, students kind of missing these points and so as a writer that you may not have as much experience in an academic environment or maybe you've been out for a while uh, i hope that this gives you some direction to get the wheels going and build up that momentum early on um, and so there will be there are more resources more in-depth resources like the ones that michael mentioned um, within the writing center and our resources drop down so please make use of that um, but here i just want to frame your mind into what we're looking for as, as ter in terms of structure and content. Uh, so the first, so there's, there's basically going to be three main parts of your essay: the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And so your introduction is kind of like any presentation you may give, like a PowerPoint presentation. It's you always have a first slide that tells your audience what you're going to be talking about and why it's important. And so that's your introduction paragraph. You're just going to be basically pitch just overviewing, presenting an overview of what you're going to be talking about and why it's important. So I want you to think about this because there's a there's an important statement in, in your introduction that your instructors look for, and it's called a thesis statement. Essentially, this tells your reader what the purpose is of your essay. And so a great way for you to know what your instructor is looking for is to look at the module learning outcomes. So every module, you have four modules, Every module will have learning outcomes on the home page. So every module will have learning outcomes for every assignment on the home page. That is basically what your instructor is looking for, and that is what your that your your instructor will be looking for your for measuring your understanding of those concepts. And those are great statements uh, to put into your introduction into your introduction paragraph, and to help ground you when you're answering these questions. So you know. The, in addition to the learning outcomes, your assignments will have like three or four questions that you have to answer. Use those learning outcomes as like the lenses to, to view those questions. So address the learning outcomes through answering the questions. So consider that with your thesis statement development uh, and definitely make use of those module learning outcomes because they give you, they give you what your instructor is looking for on each assignment. From there, you've got your body paragraphs. And so one of my best, one of my, uh, the best recommendation, recommendations I could give you from your first getting off, getting going in your writing um, is, is uh, to break up those questions into sections and subsections using headers and subheaders. So just like on a PowerPoint presentation, you have headers that tell your reader or tell your audience what this, what this slide is about. Same thing within your essay, include a header, include subsections within that that make it overtly obvious to your instructor that you are addressing this part of the assignment. This is the key term that you're gonna be addressing. Um, so not only does it provide some structure for you, for your essay, but it also makes it very obvious for your instructor that you are hitting all those points within your, within your assignment. Um, and so again, going back to the content of of your of your assignment is your instructor looking for the conclusion? Uh, yeah, sure, we're looking for your answer to the question, but again, we're looking for the reasons why. And so, when you draft your paragraphs, I kind of want you to think about 
aiming for about four to seven sentences. Uh, trust me, nobody's going to be counting your sentences out, but I think it's a good guideline for you because if you're going below that four sentence mark, then you're probably being a little bit too brief or concise and you're not exploring the topics or discussing the topics in detail. So make sure you're going back and citing some evidence um, from your background readings. Again, we're looking for APA citations um, and, and some evidence, some objective research and evidence to support your conclusions. And if you're going above that seven sentence mark, then you're probably going, you're probably uh, rambling on too much or you could make that into a more concise structure to better highlight your ideas or you just need to break up that longer paragraph into some more some more paragraphs and maybe two or three paragraphs but you don't want to go on and on a, a page and a half of text of block text um, you really want to break that up into small sections and subsections include those headers uh, and make it really easy for your instructor to to pick out those main points um, if you're if you're struggling, again, I, I talked about the thesis statements above, uh, but if you're struggling uh, in, in terms of how to start a paragraph and what your instructor is looking for, I always, I always mention these points right here. Define the key term, explain the application of the key term to the assignment, and then discuss why the concept is important to either the module learning outcome or just the class in general. Um, specifically and with, with specific focus to that to the to the module learning outcome so those three points I think if you cover those that should get you to that four to seven mark include some evidence in there to support your ideas and that's a great way of just getting started this is not going to be the perfect way I can promise you that your instructor will give you feedback but it's really important for you to take that feedback and then just continue to build build upon it your instructor is not looking for perfection. In fact, you shouldn't expect, um, expect that of your instructor. We're here to make you better communicators and better critical thinkers. That's our value, that's, that's our objective. And so when you, when you explore these concepts in a variety of different ways by defining and explaining and discussing um, the value of these concepts, you're, you're in essence exploring these concepts from a variety of different ways and you're thinking about them in different ways. So consider that when you're drafting up your, your assignments. And then the conclusion paragraph is the last part of your ass assignment. And it, and it really just reflects, it's just kind of like a reflection of your introduction. Your introduction is telling your, your audience what you're going to be talking about, why it's important, and your conclusion is going to be basically stay, stating what you already have talked about and why that's important. And so they're, they're mirror images of, e of each other um, again, this is not uh, an all-inclusive, these are not all-inclusive suggestions. It's just simply to get the wheels going. And over time, you're going to receive more detailed feedback from your instructor become, uh, to become a better written communicator, uh, a better writer. Uh, and so I just highly suggest that you, that you accept that feedback and, you know, with, with willing and open arms. So I hope that helps. Again, refer back to the resources under the, you know, the writing resources under the resources tab if you need some more in-depth um, advice. Always reach out to your instructor because we love hearing from you and we love to, to support you in this process. Honestly, it is, it is our honor to, to serve you. Uh, so please make use of us. Thank you, Dr. Del Hero. We also have resources to help students outside of the classroom. First, there's Alumni Fire, which is for all current students and Trident alumni. The URL is on your screen now. This is a place where you can connect with other students, alumni, faculty, and staff to get advice on your education, career, and more. For more information, reach out to alumni at trident.edu. We also have Career One Stop, which is a source for career skills development, such as resume reviews, interview practice, and more. This can be accessed on the front page of your student portal right after you log in. If you have any questions on that, reach out to Trident for careers at trident.edu. That's Trident, the number four careers at trident.edu. And now we're gonna move on to today's Q&A session.
Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the new session. Tasha, Brett, and give Dr. Del Hierro a moment. Join us. Yeah, there he goes. Uh, so welcome, everyone. And as a reminder, if you have any questions, you can submit those in the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. I'll go about halfway down, you'll see a question box. And excuse me. A little noisy outside, so I wanted to close my window. But uh, first question, this one is for you. Uh, Brett, uh, and let me see, what, what is your recommendation uh, on taking multiple classes per session as a master's student? That's a great question, and it's one I've discussed many times with students uh, who are wanting to earn their degree as quickly as possible and see the benefits of, you know, their uh, being able to take two classes per session and, and graduate sooner. But it is also a lot of work. Uh, you, you know, doubling up your courses means extra time management needed. And uh, we also have options to overlap sessions where you basically can, instead of taking two classes in one session, you can overlap each session with one class. And so you overlap two classes for a period of time, but you also have a little bit of a breather. So there are different options available. Um, I would highly recommend starting a, a conversation with your student success advisor. Uh, we're the ones that can help guide you through this, schedule out your classes, talk about graduation dates. And uh, the other important part that goes along with that, which is self-motivation, time management, study skills, uh, all those things that are a key part to becoming successful if you do decide to uh, pursue two classes. Okay, great, thank you. And take you back off of that. Can't get a better response than that. That was that was great, Brett. I just wanted to highlight that highlight the flexibility option of Trident. I'm sure you've heard about our flexibility, but what Brett just mentioned and outlined in terms of scheduling is just one of the many ways that highlights the flexibility of the Trident experience. So uh, not only is there flexibility within the actual class of you know, submitting your assignments and how you work through those those assignments, the asynchronous format. It's also very helpful for busy adults, but uh, for anybody who's interested in accelerating their path to graduation, uh, that is one of the many ways that uh, that you can do that is is taking advantage of those overlapping sessions if necessary, doubling up wherever possible. Uh, so excellent, excellent response, Brett. Great, uh, thank you. And, and to build up that, Dr. Dell here, what are what are some things that students should look out for uh, when when they are in this situation, when doubling up or taking extra classes, uh, in relation to how you know things to look out for if they're falling behind, or if they're you know if they're not keeping up with the coursework? Is that something that faculty members or SSAs actively look out for? Well, I know, I think Brett and Tasha could definitely speak more, more upon this, but um, as Tasha mentioned in her piece about um, time management, setting up some, some very specific goals about when you want to submit your assignments uh, throughout each week and maybe even different parts of the week uh, is going to be really critical for anybody's success, whether you're taking one class or two classes or three classes. Uh, setting up that schedule as as having goals to keep yourself on on schedule is is really going to be critical. Um, I also I think Tasha also mentioned uh, your vacation schedule or holiday schedule. Looking ahead and 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 planning out when you could submit early or when you should have uh, an option of submitting early. If there are some upcoming work events or work deadlines that are coming down the pipeline or pop up unexpectedly. Um, you'll need to, you know, I would just want to encourage you to reach out to your instructor and your SSA who will be monitoring, both of us are, are will be monitoring your, your progress and reaching out consistently throughout the, throughout the session. But um, think through those, those deadlines and, and, and what you need to do to, uh, mm -hmm. to put your nose to the grindstone and, you know, to, to get your assignments in earlier. Um, we also have an extension policy and practice within, within we have a variety of extension policies and practices um, that you can take advantage of, but we need to know early on up front so that we can prep you for, for what needs to be done in order for you to be eligible for these various extensions. 
please don't wait until the very end and, and tell us about your, you know, the emergencies that pop up or that have popped up throughout the session. Reach out to us because trust us, there is nothing that you can say that we probably haven't already heard from other students. But again, I just want to highlight the flexibility and the caring, compassionate attitude of everybody throughout Trident. Your faculty, I'm speaking on behalf of faculty right now. I know Tasha also is a faculty member, um, but works in various capacities on the operations side, the admission, I mean, advising side. Um, but please reach out to us early on so that we can provide you with a plan and options that you can that, that fit your schedule so that you can pass your classes and move on to graduation. Well said, Dr. Del Yaro, and I will keep this brief because I think you covered a lot, but I I can't emphasize enough the tendency that we have, and we all have this tendency is like, you know what, I'm struggling. I'm gonna pull within my, I'm just gonna kind of pull away from people and kind of just try and suffer through it. And I love when a student says, hey, I'm behind, help me, because we can plan ahead now, even if it's the last week of class, even if it's the last day of class, we can talk about options. Um, you know, and I think everyone who has well intentions has things come up and sometimes, you know, the later we reach out, sometimes the harder things might be to help. And so uh, I find that when students are more connected with their advisor, with the school, they tend to be more successful because they know all of their options. And doubling up on classes is something that is super common. A huge majority of our students do it. Um, and I sometimes it's good to start with one class and if you get into a good rhythm, pick up two. It's almost like having one foot in the door versus two. Um, and I'm talking more associate bachelor level, master level, one class is considered full time. But sometimes when we have two feet in the door, um, we're more successful than having one foot in the door with the one class because then it becomes part of our everyday routine that we know, okay, I've got these two classes and these deadlines. I, I, I can't fall behind, but if I do, talk to one of us and Brett because we want to help. Exactly. Sorry, sorry, that was not short. <laughs> you're, you're so right though. I mean, the only students that we really can't help are those that do not communicate with us. You know, if we don't know what's going on and we don't know how we can help, we're at a loss. But once you start talking to us and let us know what's going on, like Dr. Del Hierro said, we've helped students through everything, everything you can possibly imagine. And we do work as a team and the support we want to provide for you is, um, you know, we will do anything within our power to help you. Uh, great, really well said, everyone. I wish I could frame those responses and just keep them up for everyone to see that it's, it's, it really, it's really great information. Uh, so next question, this is for you, Tasha. And speaking of holidays, Dr. Del Hierro, Memorial Day is coming up. Is that, how is that gonna impact uh, our due dates or uh, due dates for students, excuse me? Sure, um, I can check. I, Typically, we do not change the due dates because Memorial Day is on a Sunday. Well, sorry, Memorial Day is on a Monday, but the due dates are on Sunday nights. So what I would suggest is to plan accordingly. One year we had the 4th of July on a due date, um, which was very tricky. And um, I think everybody was a little bit understanding of the situation. But in general, what I would say is, you know well in advance what the due dates are, right? And the great thing about Trident is you don't have to be in class every day. You know you have two weeks to complete your module for the associate bachelor and graduate programs. So if there's three assignments, the discussion, the case assignment, and the SLP, uh, I would just plan accordingly. Take those days off. Enjoy them. Enjoy the, the time you have with your loved ones. Just plan um, earlier in the week, get your discussion in. Again, we talked about that that track where I would say week one of the module, always do your initial post and try and get a paper done. Maybe the first week you do your whole module and then you take the second week off. I have not looked in this moment at the calendar, but um, it's posted on trident.edu 
and you'll be able to see exactly when your due dates are and you can plan around that but you don't have to be in class on memorial day or even that weekend if you're caught up or have submitted your assignments okay great uh thank you uh and next question uh this one i'm going to actually send this one to you again tasha and is the is the tutoring also available for those who do not have a military background great question yes we've expanded our tutoring services to the classes that we find students have the most challenges with and need the most support tutoring is available for civilian students um and i think that part can be updated a little bit um our tutoring program was a, had a deal for military, but in general, there's no charge in for tutoring with Trident in our classes. Not every class has tutoring, but a large portion of our classes do. Um, you, there's a way to check in your class. It's at the very top. You'll see like course materials, course home, it will say more, more on the upper right hand side in your classroom and in the drop down it will it will say free tutoring if it doesn't an easy way is to also just ask your advisor ask your admissions advisor student success advisor we have a, a large list but um i would say probably most people in this webinar have free tutoring in their first classes and some of the more ch challenging classes. So it's not just for military. I think we lost Danny. That's all right. But, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. I was having having technical difficulties on my end, but I solved it a second after you, you finished your answer. Right. Uh, next uh, next question, this one's for Dr. Del Hierro. Uh, can you explain a bit more what you mean about reputable sources and papers? Uh, repeatable sources? Excuse me, reputable. Uh, re reputable or quality sources. Okay. Oh, reputable yeah. sources. Yeah. Um, I would, so this is actually something that our undergraduate students in our Tux courses kind of go through. It's called information literacy. How can we identify credible sources? So one credible source would be the sources that we refer you to in our background sources. So within each class, we have background readings that you can refer to that have already been vetted and, and in, included within the, within the actual class. So those have, been through those have been thoroughly checked by your instructors and provided for you. So that many of your classes will just direct you to those background sources, and there's a lot of a lot of your classes will have a number of optional sources that you can use that supplement the information there. Um, there are a number of ways that you can check how a source is credible. Uh, one is, I mean, is where you're actually getting it from. So uh, Google versus the Trident Library. You're probably going to find more credible sources within the Trident Library than you are Googling. Um, and then also the authors who's publishing it, the publishing date. Uh, I wish I can give you a, I mean, we could honestly, there are full on classes surrounding information literacy. Um, and that's a, that's a very broad, it's a, it's a broad question that I, that we can spend a lot of time on, legitimately a lot of time on this. Um, but I think my best recommendation for you is to rely more on the background sources within the class. That'll more oftentimes than not give you the information you need to understand the concepts, uh, trust the information that you're gathering, that you're that you're receiving, and that you're uh, putting into your papers. Um, and that's and and that'll also save you. It also save you from finding. Um, uh, resources that that will give you different types of information and that'll stray you off topic um, so that that is my that's my nutshell answer but if you have some more specific examples that or specific questions that you have that you'd like us to dive into then then please feel free to to further expand that question 
And if I may, Dr. Del Yero, sorry, Daddy, I know you're going to say something. Like, students will call all the time and say, hey, you know, I Googled something and my teacher, uh, not all the time, it's common, where they'll say, you know, my teacher uh, preferred that I use a different source. If you're Googling something, sometimes it's not trustworthy, sometimes it's not true, it's not peer reviewed, it's not an academic resource. And Trident's library subscribes to so many academic libraries. Um, I can't tell you, it, it's so extensive that I would challenge everyone in here to become familiar with the Trident library, start searching topics, and you'll, you'll start to see resources that are pretty solid. And those are great options as well as the background readings in your classes. Right, not only academic sources, but professional sources. So if you're in the a health science program or criminal justice program or business or leadership, there are additional sources in there that you can you can ask your your instructor um, that will that that can steer you into professional sources. So not just academic stuff that happens within an academic environment, but professional sources so that you can marry the academics and the and the practical application of of those concepts just wanted to let you know that there are also there are also um, very practical and professional sources as well within the trident library yeah and the briefly add on to that is that i, I spent a lot of time in a trident library as as i'm sure everyone else on the call has and there's anything i've ever searched for is i've been able to find something and i've you know, search for some pretty arcane stuff. So there's a lot there, a lot of quality resources. And uh, last question is stay with Dr. Del Hierro uh, and another writing themed question. And is there a is there a writing center for proofreading papers, or is there something like that within the tutoring? Uh, that was actually a question I posed to uh, the group here because I I was uh, uncertain if we had writing. Uh, within the tutoring services. Um, so if if Brett or Tasha, if you can expand upon that, I would like to know myself. Uh, Brett, do you want me? I can take this one. Um, sure. So the answer is kind of. Um, so we have we have resources. There's two different things. So in the tutoring function itself, there is options if you're in like an English class to have them review a paper. That is not an option for all classes. Now, if you are really struggling with writing, some instructors can recommend you and have a special tutoring class added on where you are bouncing papers off of someone in the tutoring services. We also have a writing workshop under our resources, which, um, if you take the time to kind of go through it, writing is really a formula and just kind of plugging in the information, right? And so once you learn that formula, it helps. I would always suggest the free service Grammarly is a great add-on on your computer as well. Um, so there are resources, but if as a blanket, someone's going to check all of your papers before you submit or um, somewhere to add, I would say, no, I wouldn't rely on that. Um, the tutoring services is more to help problem solve the issues of 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 the assignment, right? So if it's statistics, making sure you understand how to use the variables, math is going to be different. But in an English class, there usually is an option to drop in papers um, in the tutoring services itself. So I hope that's I hope I explained that well enough. And just to piggyback off that, um, under the My Resources, in, like you said, in the student portal, the writing workshop, it's self-guided. Um, you kind of go through it at your own pace, but it gives you some uh, exercises to attempt and, and a lot of information. There's a lot to it, but like Tasha said, once you kind of get the formula down and you're understanding what's expected and what you need to do, it becomes much easier. Give it a couple of classes and you'll be like, oh, this is old hat. Now I know what I'm doing. But it does take that initial effort. And and definitely using the, the writing workshop is worth the time. I've heard many students tell me that. 
Okay, and you can get to that writing workshop if you, you sign into my TLC and then you see the banner at the top where it says home, my request, et cetera, go to the end and my resources and then hit the drop down there. So that, that's the final question we have. So thank you everyone for your uh, participation today. Thank you to our panelists again, just amazing information uh, shared. Uh, and we're gonna end things off with a student success story from Brett. So Brett, the floor is yours. Really excited to hear uh, what you have to share today. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. See you in class. Well, the, the success story I chose is one that I, I deal with very often. And obviously, I've helped students through all kinds of scenarios, um, pretty much anything you could imagine. But the one I, I, I get most often is the struggle to uh, find time for school along with working full time. Uh, oftentimes being a parent, um, having kids, and that, that work, life, family, school balance. And what I helped one student with particularly is she was really struggling and that um, she was finding a hard time to, to get a quiet place to study. She had two kids and she was trying to study uh, basically in the family room in the evenings. And, and the kids were a distraction, um, as they can be. If, if you have kids, you understand. <laughs> Uh, and so what it took was coming to uh, some some conversations with her spouse about um, allowing her some, some time to get away to a quiet place to study, a place where, she, you know, if she had, even if it was just an hour, a place where she could really focus and gather her thoughts. And then we devised a schedule. So we would start off with, you know, Monday of the, of the, the first mod, she was going to start with readings in the class, watching any videos, kind of starting to prep. Uh, Tuesday, begin the discussion. Wednesday, make her discussion post and start on, on the case or the SLP. It was a plan to stay ahead of the game uh, because things are going to happen. You know, kids are going to get sick. Work is going to need you over time. Uh, there's all kinds of things. So we built in that extra buffer. Uh, so when those things happened, she could stay focused, stay on track and, and still meet her deadlines. And it worked very well for her and it, it was a challenge. It, it took some hard conversations with, with, her, with her spouse and her family to really uh, get that support and that backing that they were gonna assist her. They knew you know, what her dream was and her goal for this degree and they were gonna back her and help her with that. And it took her you know, the motivation that, okay, um, sometimes it's hard to go away from the family and study or you know, sometimes it's hard to stay up late and study, but she had that motivation that she was gonna do it and stay ahead. And I am happy to say she is in what is called the capstone course, the final course of her program this session. She will be a graduate. I uh, just begin in May, so she'll be a graduate in July. And I have worked with her and it has just been a pleasure uh, supporting her throughout this journey and seeing her reach this goal. Daniel, anything else or we're gonna wrap it up? That is everything. So thank you for the, right. for the great story. And again, good luck, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're all here to help. Thank you.